Hello, so welcome to the second edition of me responding to comments on my good talk videos. I obviously respond in comments after a video is posted and after that, but uh, sometimes it's nice to kind of reflect on what people write uh, because I really want this to be a discussion, a back and forth discussion where we kind of uh, all bring our <coughs> bring in our viewpoints on things and we maybe help each other with our experiences of different topics. <coughs> oh, sorry, I still have a little shit down my throat from being sick. Uh, the first uh, video, uh, so I'm gonna look at the four latest videos and the first one of those is the video about color. How a frame is filled with color and when something bad happens, uh, part of that frame becomes black and you have to kind of fill it again to feel whole as a person. And the first one comes from Mats. Martin, this video meant a lot to me and made me realize I roughly think of things in the same light. I just moved for work uh, to a new country, a new continent even. It's been tough being separated from my comfort zone, my family, friends, and definitely my dog. I'm lucky to have friends here that have let me lean on them extensively to regain happiness and to simply, simply find my feet again. These particular videos and all your videos continue to be thoughtful, informative, funny, and in this case, comforting. Thanks, mate. Keep on going. Keep on keeping on. Um, I went, back, back in 2008, uh, I was invited to go to Norway to study, uh, to the university in Bergen to do my masters and I went there alone. I mean we had this idea that we would go to Norway and we would buy a house and stuff, but I went there um, ahead of time and it was, even though it wasn't a different continent, it was still a weird situation to be in a totally new country all by myself uh, where I you know had to start you know getting to know new people and stuff and ironically uh, that's when I started vlogging because I wanted to tell people back home what I was doing so I started putting these videos up where I filmed myself and showed people what I was doing so in a way going to Norway really propelled me into the world I am now living in 10 years later so you never know what life's gonna give you it's really interesting next one is uh, from Maria your good talk videos are just four minutes of pos positivity oh I think that when you when you talk about deep stuff but you try to turn it into something that is good. You, you try to turn a bad situation or a bad feeling or something into something good. I think that actually const constitutes positivity, which is a good thing. Uh, Ida. I will translate this one. This video gave me so much. Sometimes when something unexpected happens, you forget about the obvious and you lose yourself. You should never forget to be your own best friend and try to make it through with the support of others. Good talk. Yes. That's the thing. I mean, everything should start with yourself, but you shouldn't keep it inside. And this is something I am I'm struggling with a lot uh, because I have this idiotic idea that I should figure things out by myself and not open myself up to others because I, I need to be their rock, which is stupid. And I'm sort of gonna make a video about that uh, as well. Uh, but yes, you know, finding, if you can find your path where you're going, lean on others. I mean, that's how Dorothy got to the Emerald City. Am I right? Am I right? Yellow Brick Road, sure, but sometimes the Yellow Brick Road disappeared and she needed the help of her friends to make it through. Yeah. Martina writes, write a book and put this in <laughs> from word to word. You really should. One of my little bucket list things is yes. I'm blessed with an enormous amount of optimism, positivity, and self-motivation. What can I say? I'm a Gemini. I'm a Cancer. Uh, as a passionate book reader, I'm looking for motivation in books. Books are my temple of peace and harmony. I also adore to travel, so every time dark colors take me over, I start daydreaming about all the beautiful places I want to visit, and I know I will, and all the bright colors take over the initiative. I'm happy again, and most of all, my husband. My voice of reason, my biggest support. Sometimes I feel I really don't need anything more except good talk videos, of course. Oh, stop. stop it! Stop it! Keep going. Um, yes, it, it kind of hits on a similar thing, uh, where uh, I think this is something that you do as a kid. When, when, you know, when you're in a situation of danger, you kind of, if, if I hide, if I hide myself, the danger can't reach me which is the worst thing you can do in a fire, for example. Uh, I went, we had a, a fire um, 
training yesterday on how to how to think and act and do. So I, I learned a lot. I learned some of the most you know, really good things that I, I didn't know. Like if there's a fire in an apartment, stay in your apartment because it's a fire cell, which means it takes a while for the fire to get to you. Don't go out into uh, the staircase if there's smoke. Side note. Uh, but yes, again, finding your way either through uh, you know thinking where you're gonna go, like going to go to my happy place, uh, or of course uh, seek help from people close to you that you trust. Uh, the next video uh, was the one about uh, making friends and Maria again. I met most of my friends on the internet and they're the greatest people ever. I think it's cool how talking to a stranger online can turn to being a friend so easily and I uh, meet friends at school. I was going through old pictures yesterday. Uh, I was actually started, I started to try and make a list of all the people I've met on the internet through YouTube and such and that is a mission impossible because I'm probably gonna end up uh, around six, seven hundred people that I have some form of you know, contact with. Uh, but yes, the internet can be a beautiful place to find uh, others. Uh, one thing I really like about you and the ideas that you put out there is that they are very re relatable. It's like you're talk taking the words out of my mouth. Uh, I love meeting people. Some became plain acquaintances, some friends for life, IRL. I'm grateful to have men made friends from school, where I live, work and other connections. One thing I do enjoy is meeting people from different corners of the world through travel or mostly the internet. Not to date or anything like that, but just to be connected and have hopefully meaningful conversation. What a time to be alive. I consider you a, as a friend, Martin, whether you like it or not. <laughs> uh, I, I think I replied to that, that we, we should, I mean, we should have Fika soon. Uh, I mean, my Friday's book, but how's yours? I mean, we, we live, we don't really live like next door, uh, to say the least. Uh, but still, there's, there's, there's this part of me that knows that Many of these people that I know, uh, many of you guys, I will hopefully at some point in the remaining parts of my life, at some point meet. There's so many people that I've known for, for 10, 12 years that I still haven't met, and that is a comforting thought. The antidote, or the antidote, the, the, um, um, the other part of that, the negative part, is that since some, so many people that I know live so far away, I might not be able to see them uh, IRL uh, that many times in my life but still it's nice to have people waiting out there and it's nice to be waited for uh, I love uh, for you to speak uh, come speak to my sixth graders about this especially meeting new people from different countries yes imagine imagine if we could somehow uh, fulfill the promise of the internet where we are connected to each other and not through media or through other people but we are di directly in connection and we start to get to know each other and we start to become friends and and take away the what differs us and maybe that can reduce war maybe that can reduce tension huh <sighs> let's make that happen <sighs> uh this video is so uh, relatable i have very few irl friends and many more colleagues I have way more friends online from various social media. I just find it hard to meet people who want to hang out and things like that. I, I, I totally agree. I totally, totally agree. Uh, I have One of the things I have is a fear of being left behind. Like yesterday, uh, a, a friend of mine was having a birthday party and many of my, my other friends were there. It was just like, uh, I mean, obviously not pointing fingers, but it's just that feeling of what am I doing wrong? Uh, why am I not there and such? Um, also, there, there's a song, I can't remember the artist right now, but it's a song called, uh, I think it's called Grown Up. Uh, I have, uh, I have less, I have less friends, but more best friends, and they're scattered around the globe, which is one of the lines. I mean, basically that entire song, it just, I, it, that is relatable, at least to me. Uh, you should watch it. Uh, I have, watch it, you should listen to it. I have mostly two types of friendship. One is uh, those friends that I made in school when I was about six years old, uh, which are like siblings to me, and I know they will be in my life forever and I will be in theirs. The other major type is people I've met online, and some IRL too, from all over around the world, through common inspirations like movies, books, anime, video games. I love all my friends. That's the thing. When I got married, 
uh, five years ago, almost five years ago. Uh, it was it was so weird to look out uh, into the room of these all these guests. I mean, obviously everyone I knew wasn't there, but it, it was just a, such a mixture of people. There were many people from other countries. There were two people I hadn't met before, like physically hadn't met before. The first time I met them was the day before my wedding. Uh, there were family, there were people from from Stockholm, from uh, the South, uh, and from, yeah, again, from different countries. And it was just amazing to see all of them in that same place. And the sad thing about, <laughs> the sad thing about only getting married once is that that really only happens once. Maybe when I turn 40 next year, or even better, when I turn 50, because that it will be on a Saturday. Mark that calendar, 21st of July, 2049. No, 2049. 2029. This will be a night to remember. Uh, another one from the friends video. I've made my close friends that I met at uni and college. However, once I left uni, it was hard to meet up with everyone because they lived all over the UK. We all had our own lives. Last year, I found a website called meetup.com, which when you explain it to people, it does sound a bit weird, but basically, basically you join groups that interest you and meet up with them in person. I'd say the most active groups uh, I'm in are photography groups, European travel groups, who I ended up going to Stockholm with last year uh, with a 20s, 30s social group. Uh, this last group, I met two amazing girls and I called them really good friends. They live in a town that's a 30 minute drive away, but we seem to meet up at least once a month. I've also joined a rock and metal fan group, but it's still plucking up the courage to meet them. They go to live gigs and there's basically cool sounding rock bar that day and so on. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean that's exactly how I started meeting people uh, that are, were YouTube creators. We had the similar interests. We were so vastly different in age and where we lived and even what country we were from, but we met because we had a common purpose. I mean, the, the Malmö YouTube gathering in 2012 is probably so far the highlight of all of those meetings because you had people from Denmark, people from the Netherlands, people from Belgium, uh, Michelle uh, from the US came in and we would do these after we had panel discussions about all those to all the topics about YouTube we would have dance performances as I play uh, I performed a song with a drum uh, we had people play the piano and the guitar the ukulele it was just ah oh, it was just beautiful so I I I really think uh, when you find people out of common interest, it's a really good thing. Uh, the third video is the one, you know, uh, I want to learn. I mean, right now I'm also doing my fourth hand-in for my social psychology class, which is about um, pro-social behavior and altruism. I realized that I am an altruist. I am an altruist. Uh, I'm a person who wants to help other people uh, regardless uh, of whether it it's you know it benefits me or not because I just feel like if I can give to other people uh, that gives me value. The more you know, the more you realize that you don't know much. We just plumb the depths of our ignorance. Start with the ukulele; it has only four strings. Plays any style; it's small and easily transported. Old African American proverb: You get a better idea of where you're going if you know where you've been. History, music, and cooking are good starts. Yes, I mean. <laughs> the other day I met a friend uh, whom I mentioned uh, previously in the video about Smile. Uh, <coughs> and we were having this discussion about things and things and then she ended it with saying, and I, I'm, I don't know the exact uh, uh, English translation, uh, and furthermore I also uh, considered that Cartago should be destroyed. And when she said that I was like, oh, because <laughs> I mean I know what that means, but most of the people I work with had no idea. It's it's a it's a politician in uh, ancient Rome who basically ended anything that he said on any topic. He ended it with that line that he considered that Cartago, the city of Cartago, should be destroyed. Uh, I mean that's when you find the sort of common like ah, oh, it's like waiting for Godot. Uh, a lot of people I know don't know that reference. I mean obviously I'm a little bit older, uh, but when you meet people that know the same thing as you. Then you, then you have this like, ah, it's like a ah, validation of some sort. Uh, speaking of Norway, I've also wanted to learn new stuff for a while, but I hardly ever do anything concrete about it. I definitely want to start reading actual books regularly to replace some of my time spent aimlessly scrolling social media. I like reading, why don't I read more? I think that has to do with setting priorities and then doing it, uh, instead of just, just saying that you're going to do and not maybe not doing it. I know. When Martin says smart things, um, 
I mean, I, in, in the fall, um, uh, I did a lot of puzzles because I sort of needed, I needed something to contrast uh, the constant bombardment of social media and, and all the impressions I got from work and stuff. I haven't been doing that as much uh, after New Year's, uh, but I did go and start uh, exercising more. So I think that as long as you find things that keep you occupied and keeps you the find that gives you balance, that's a good thing. <clears throat> I really loved how you said we should make our New Year's Eve resolutions. <laughs> oh, on that matter. Uh, or any for that matter, uh, rather realistic, in order not to set ourselves for a failure. But for me this year, I, dedicate, I, dedicate, I decided to educate myself more about the environment and how I'm able to help it, even if it's trivial. I'm a huge animal lover. I have cats to uh, cat lovers unite. Woo hoo! He's out on the balcony sleeping. And <coughs> what? I had to admit I've struggled with eating meat because of it. You know, you get told you need to, you need protein in your life. Blah blah blah. Ignorant me didn't realize I could find it elsewhere. This was also my New Year's Eve resolution. I've been meat-free ever since. Disclaimer, totally okay with meat eaters. I know in 2018 everyone gets offended at everything. <laughs> I hear you, girl. Politically correctness and I need to be offended by something. Give me something to be offended by. Maybe we should all set ourselves a weekly task about how to learn to be more understanding. Which is also a video I am sort of uh, planning to do, which is about tolerance for other people. Yes, the thing is, I mean, uh, as for eating meat, I, I love meat. I love the taste of meat. I know it doesn't, you know, doesn't ring every bell in 2018. But I think also that because of the social pressure that has come from you know, influencers and from society and the market, uh, I've actually started eating less meat. Uh, I, we often replace it with something else like falafel or vegetarian alternatives, which I think is a good thing because uh, I don't I don't personally believe that uh, everyone should just like boom stop eating meat like on a day because uh, for the, the society structure that would be a catastrophe. But if we slowly start to uh, cut down on these things. Uh, the same way as people are more and more uh, buying organic or ecological products, then the market starts to adapt to that, so that suddenly there are more choices within uh, um, those kinds of uh, merchandise. Uh, but it happens at a pace that society can kind of keep up with the society structure. So I think that's a good thing. And I think that tolerance for other people, even if they are not like you, is very, very important. I really do enjoy the series of videos, Martin. Your topics are very engaging. Everyone can relate to the topics and we rarely have a chance to think about these things. As for me, even though I'm retired, I still want to learn. I'm practicing French for my upcoming trip and Japanese because I have friends in Japan and also Swedish. You can never be too old to learn. Amen! In fact, it probably keeps my brain young because I'm still learning. If you want to learn Swedish, watch all of Martin's great videos. Uh, then she also... I, I, I try to kind of not make the comments too long. Or I, I don't take everything from the comment. But she also links to other resources resources uh, in that video. Go find it! Uh, Lina, uh, the part about playing a guitar is so true. I wanted to learn how to play guitar at some point in my life, but I never did. I love dancing. I would like to learn how to dance. You know, like learn some new cool moves, maybe. And I wish I could speak another language aside from English and Russian, but so far not so good. I, it just hit me when it comes to the guitar because I often, I've often had a guitar in my hand and, he, and I have, I've had a keyboard or a piano even more, and I think one of the reasons, uh, especially when you're a little bit older, that you don't really push through and do it is because you're doing it alone. No one is putting any pressure on you. So I just had this idea: maybe if I really wanted to learn the guitar, I should meet up with someone who also wants to learn to, to, to play the guitar and we go through tutorials together and we sort of we push each other and we we encourage each other that okay the next week we will learn these three chords and how to jump from uh, from a minor to d to c or whatever uh, make it a project with someone else i think that's actually the way to go especially when you're a bit older and your patience is not really uh, I feel like I've lost my passion for learning because of school and exams. I used to love learning languages and finding patterns and connection within them. 
When I went to sixth uh, form high school, I was made to learn French from scratch in two years. I worked so hard and got top grades the whole year, but failed my final exams due to nerves. I want to pick up languages again, but I don't think I will ever use them. I worry that I will just forget and make all my time spent learning seem wasteful. I wish I could get rid of this, this fear and enjoy learning again without feeling the need to prove anything. That's the thing. The, the question I ask myself, I mean, I'm, I'm studying social psychology right now, a course, uh, and I have a master's degree already, but I, I took the course because I want to learn. Uh, there's no, for me, there's no outside pressure in uh, having to know this to do this and that. It just gives me a better sense of understanding my life. And I can relate so much to some of the things uh, that I read about in this course. And yes, the way that uh, school or the school system is set up is not for everyone. I mean, we we try to conform everyone into this pattern, uh, which which is very suitable for some people, but not so suitable for others because they have other ways of picking up things. Uh, this idea that that um, the nerd in the class is the one looking like this at the teacher, while another person who is sitting like this could be listening just as much, but the teacher is getting the sense that the, the student is not paying attention, but that's the student's way of listening. Uh, so that teacher might put that student in a, a in a worse situation grade-wise and so forth, because we are different. We have different ways of um, taking in knowledge, I guess. And the last video was the achievement versus um, uh, acknowledgement uh, video. I've always wanted attention from people. I want to get a compliment when I'm achieving something. That's pretty sad when I think about it. I have a hard time to see the difference between uh, achievement and acknowledgements. Thanks for bringing this up. By the way, I think you have said uh, what the song is called that plays in the background, but I have forgotten. I love it, what it's called. It is called, uh, what is it called? Uh, Reckless by Martin Hall. It is an epidemic sound uh, track. I think this is sort of sums up what social media is all about. Uh, yeah. And we're going to get to that uh, in a little bit. The, the you want to get acknowledgement for what you do. Uh, I mean, I have three Instagram accounts. Uh, I have the Swedish Lad, uh, which is my my social account when it comes to people who are not Swedes, but also Swedes. Then I have Martin Arverbro, which is my Swedish account where I can include people and I can write in Swedish, which is an account that many of you also follow. And then I have the Swedish language, which is, which is more driven towards what I do language-wise on this channel. Uh, and of course, sometimes I get a lot of attention, especially when I do Insta story. Sometimes when I post something, I get almost nothing, in which game I'm like, oh, why? Por que moi? That's two languages. So, so yeah, it is a struggle uh, uh, in, in finding a way to reward yourself for when you do good. Like someone once told me online, set some goals, stay quiet about them, smash them, clap for your own goddamn self. P.S. A Beautiful Mind is one of my favorite movies, Splendid Choice. If you... Let me give you an advice here. Not you, but like all of you. Um, and this is something I did when I took my driver's license. Uh, I studied really hard to do the theory part uh, when I was here in Stockholm, I was in the Navy. But I didn't tell a single person when uh, I was going to do the, the driving test because if I had said something, then pressure would have built up and that would have been something that I would have carried with me in the car. So I told absolutely no one. Uh, and then, once I, you know, <laughs> once I had done it, and this was before social media, we're talking, you know, the year 2000. So, I'll put it on my website with my flying toasters. Uh, but this was uh, back then, but still. And then afterwards, I, I remember I called my, my parents and I have a driver's license. And they were like, what? And they were like, oh, praise Lord, praise Lord, he's such a good child. I mean, he's the middle child and he's, he's doing really well and stuff. But that was a way to take pressure off. Uh, so sometimes it's a good thing to state your goal because then you pr put pressure on yourself by having other people check in on you for doing it. But if, if, if it's a performance thing, sometimes it's actually good to get, just keep your mouth shut, do it, and then like, look what I did, boom. And the last comment from Lina. This is something I've been struggling a lot lately because I mostly post pictures on Instagram but because they changed the algorithm last year. My work gets less exposure now and a lot of people don't even see what I post. And sometimes I might be proud of what I did because I put extra work in creating a shot or I just really like it. But then I post it and I get almost no response, which makes me wonder, am I bad? 
The lack of acknowledgement makes me feel like a bit of a failure. I still pick up my camera and shoot things because I love it, but I just wonder whether I'm good at what I'm doing, even a little bit or not. Uh, here's a tip for all of you watching this video. You should go and follow Lena. She is a wonderful photographer and she's a super social and wonderful person that I'm so happy I got to meet in Stockholm. Uh, my camera is acting up. I'm not really sure what's happening or if you can see what's happening. It's flashing on the screen. But thank you so much for watching this video. I love it when you comment on my good talk videos. I love it when you comment on any of my videos because that, again, makes me feel like I'm doing something right. Um, but I'm also feeling that even me saying the things is a good thing. So thank you. Good talk.